Okay, this is the level three exponent videos. Level three meaning the hardest of the hard. And you don't really have to even learn most of the stuff unless you're score, looking to score in the top 10%. So these are hard problems, hard concepts. And what I'm going to show you is a mixture of exponents and really factoring. So let's, let's get a scary looking problem in here. Okay, the problem asks you, let's say hypothetically, to simplify this expression. What does this equal? Now, many of you may think, oh, I just learned this rule in video one, where when you multiply two numbers that are similar, with their exponents, you add the exponents. So what's the rule if you're simply adding numbers? Do you add these numbers? Do you add them and take the average? Or what's going on? Well, let's start off by saying you cannot simply say, oh, 5 to the 10th plus 5 to the 9th is equal to 5 to the 19th. That is incorrect. So, boom, incorrect. Does not equal. 5 to the 19th equals 5 to the 10th times 5 to the 9th. And if you want to have a refresher on that, definitely go back to video one of this series. Now, for this gnarly looking expression right over here, what do we do? Well, we want to factor out the fives, meaning each of these elements at the top here, five to the eight, five to the nine, five to the 10, what's the greatest amount that they share? Would it be five to the ninth? Well, I could pull five nines from, or nine fives from here. I could definitely pull nine fives from here, but could I pull nine fives from this guy right here? Notice there's only eight fives. So this is the smallest of the bash. And so that's what we can take from each one of these entities. You can think of this as an entity, 5 to the 10, 5 to the 9, 5 to the 8. Each of these have at least 5 to the 8 in them. So we're going to start here where we have 5 to the 10. We're going to pull out, again, 8 fives. And that's going to leave us with 5 squared here, replacing 5 to the 10. We can also check this. Remember, when you have parentheses, and you take a number here onto the outside. This is the same as saying 5 to the 8 times 5 squared. Does 5 to the 8 times 5 squared equal 5 to the 10th? Again, add 8 plus 2, 10, definitely. And now we can just factor again. We pull out 8 fives from 5 to the 9, leaving us simply with 1 5. And then from the very end here, we're pulling out all of those. We're not left with the 0 there. Here's the important part. We're left with a 1, because 1 times 5 to the 8 is 5 to the 8th. Now I put that all here underneath all of this. I put the 5 to the 7th. We don't want to forget that. And now you can see how this starts to work neatly together. Note, boom, there goes all those all those seven to fives. They're completely gone. But if I take those away from the bottom, make sure that up here, these eight, I take seven from here, meaning that there's only one five left. And now I can simplify this further, going to down here. I have five on the outside. Inside, I have five squared, which is 25. I have the plus five next to it right here, which is 30, and then another 1. And so you add up what's in parentheses here. 25 plus 5 plus 1 is 31. 5 times 31 is equal to 160. Oops, 155. Always key. Do not mess up at the very end of a difficult problem. <laughs> but the, the important thing here is that they may not give you something like this that you could squeeze in the calculator. Because I believe that this would probably fit into the calculator. It would be a kind of a, a, a definite pain to enter all this information in here. It's much, it's much quicker once you can factor them out. But I think that, Jerry, if they're really testing this, they would give you something like 5 to the 100 plus 5 to the 99, etc. Because that way you can't enter that in the calculator, but you could still simplify the expression the way we simplified here above. And again, in this case, the final answer is 155.